Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. Recently, China has witnessed the emergence of what can be considered the modern four great inventions, Qingdao beer laced with urine, old barrel sauerkraut made by foot stomping, the dilapidated Waima motors resembling scrap metal, and the unfinished buildings of Evergrande real estate. Unfortunately, many individuals have found themselves entangled in these new, four great inventions, of life. As a result, some young people jestingly refer to it as experiencing the misfortune of drinking Qingdao beer, consuming old barrel sauerkraut, driving a Waima car, and purchasing an unfinished Evergrande property, a quartet of life's misfortunes. Now, let's delve into these four prominent social phenomena in China, since the incident of someone urinating in the Qingdao beer warehouse, Chinese netizens, especially beer enthusiasts, have been in an uproar. Some individuals sarcastically comment that the beer is now authentic, questioning whether it's any surprise that uric acid levels are elevated when consuming the original product. Following the event, it is reported that Qingdao Beer contacted the police the next day, leading to the arrest and detention of the worker who urinated and the person who filmed the incident. Media reports indicate that the workers' act resulted in direct losses of over 3 million yuan in the raw material warehouse. Despite this, public security did not investigate Qingdao Beer but arrested and detained the exposers of the truth. Is exposing food safety issues now considered a crime? A restaurant owner, in response to Qingdao Beer's handling of the situation, expressed dissatisfaction and terminated their cooperation. Despite the controversy, some opportunistic individuals see the urination incident as a rare business opportunity. An individual in electronic marketing views it as a chance to become an industry leader, emphasizing the importance of turning a crisis into an opportunity and capitalizing on the attention. In China, not everyone is driven by self-interest. Some netizens point out that addressing problems is common across all industries. However, others argue that issues of food safety and hygiene are unfairly dismissed as conspiracy theories. Regardless of opinions, the fact remains, the Qingdao beer urination incident has dealt a significant blow to the company's reputation and interests. Following the incident, Qingdao beer's stock price plummeted by 7.5%, resulting in a market value loss of 8.307 billion renminbi. As the negative impact continues, the stock price is expected to experience further fluctuations. Some netizens have even pledged never to drink Qingdao beer again, rejecting its dominance with a simple, you're overbearing, I won't drink. In addition to beer being tainted with urine, there have been nauseating revelations about the processing of another popular Chinese food, pickled vegetables, known as swan kai, with a particularly sour taste. According to media reports, five companies, Hunan Chaki Vegetable Industry, Jinrue Food, Junshan District Yayuan Pickled Vegetable, Straight Pickled Vegetable, and Tantan Xiao Food, have been acquiring substandard pickled vegetables from unhygienic pits. These companies then process the pickled vegetables on behalf of several well-known brands, including Kangshifu's Old Barrel Sauerkraut Noodles. The piles of pickled vegetables, resembling trash, are trampled upon by barefoot workers, who also introduce contaminants like cigarette butts during the processing. A manager stated that in China, if a product's quality is poor, such as being mixed with leaves, the penalty might be a mere 1 or 2,000 yuan. However, if such incidents occurred abroad, the fine could be at least 100,000 yuan. This manager's statement indirectly highlights the inadequacy of China's food safety supervision. The meager fines are insufficient to eradicate food safety issues. Following the exposure of these incidents, the stock prices of leading instant noodle companies, Kang Shifu and Uni President, both took a significant hit. Some netizens remarked that spitting and tossing cigarette butts is crossing the line, while others predicted the downfall of the pickled vegetable industry. All these incidents represent just the tip of the iceberg in China's food processing problems. Apart from severe food safety incidents, the more pressing concerns for Chinese citizens lie in the automotive and real estate sectors. 
These two sectors are considered the additional two new inventions in China's modern four great inventions, and they have truly made life unbearable for the common people. Firstly, let's address China's electric vehicles, particularly the recent downfall of Waima Motors, which has plummeted from being a leading player in the Chinese electric car market. Waima Motors, an emerging brand in China's electric car industry, alongside NIO, Xpeng, and Li Auto, is now facing bankruptcy, as reported by Chinese business inquiry platforms. On October 10, Waima Motors officially announced its difficulty in sustaining operations. Prior to this announcement, numerous incidents circulated on the internet regarding Waima Motors' electric car batteries catching fire. Some car owners claimed that Waima Motors, under the pretext of car maintenance, locked their car batteries without their consent, leading to collective protests from car owners. Unfortunately, there was no official response to their grievances. One car owner revealed the distressing experience of owning a Waima car for four years, only to be able to sell it for a meager 40,000 yuan, while the official website listed the selling price at around 200,000 yuan. With Waima Motors on the brink of bankruptcy, leaked information suggests not only are employee salaries in arrears, but Waima car owners are also experiencing malfunctions in the car's onboard system, rendering it unusable. Since May of this year, reports have been circulating about Waima Motors closing its stores, leaving car owners with no place for repairs and unable to obtain replacement parts. This has led to a halt in business for many ride-hailing drivers. Additionally, starting from October 11th, Numerous owners of Waima's new energy vehicles reported issues on social media platforms, such as network abnormalities in Waima's intelligent driving system and the inability to use features like remote control functions. The Waima Motors app also displayed network abnormalities and appeared to be out of service. Car owners complained about the closure of Waima's 4S stores, leaving them in a predicament even if they had purchased their cars there. According to media reports, the founder of Waima Motors, Shen Hui, previously served as the vice president of Geely Automobile Group. Shen Hui gained fame in 2011 for leading Geely's acquisition of the Swedish luxury carmaker Volvo. Waima Motors shareholders include Baidu, Tencent Holdings Limited, and financial giants like Sequoia Capital, with a total of 12 rounds of financing accumulating 41 billion renminbi. It was considered a darling of the capital market in the new energy vehicle startup scene. However, Waima Motors faced financial challenges in 2021, including a sluggish capital market, significant fluctuations in raw material prices, and setbacks in obtaining operating development funds. Finally, on October 10, Waima Motors filed for bankruptcy reorganization. Shen Hui, chairman of Waima Motors, claimed on social media that he had left China and relocated to Munich, planning to move to New York afterward. There were rumors suggesting Shen Hui left behind 40 billion yuan in investments and debts and fled to the United States, leaving behind unpaid employees and car owners with disabled vehicle functions, and no means of recourse for their grievances. Although on October 18, the official statement from Waima claimed that Shen Hui had not fled overseas but shifted his focus to international affairs, mainland media reported that as of the end of 2021, Waima Motors had a total of 3,952 employees, and during the bankruptcy reorganization process, only 817 employees remained. This included 173 in the core department at the Wanzhou production base, 153 in the Huanggang Production Base, 43 in the Chengdu Research Institute, 24 in the Product Planning and Intelligent Systems Related Department, and 69 in the Sales and User Services Department. The drastic reduction in the number of employees has led many to question whether Waima's leadership has indeed abandoned ship. With Waima exiting the stage of China's new energy vehicles, it leaves behind only consumers and second-hand car dealers in limbo. More distressing for the Chinese populace than automobiles is the issue of real estate in China. According to media reports, at least 5 million households in China have purchased pre-sold houses from Evergrande Group, but now, 
numerous developments by this real estate company have been left unfinished. Countless families find themselves in housing and economic crises as a result. In Evergrande's unfinished buildings in Zhengzhou alone, there are as many as 25,249 units, constituting 28% of the total transaction volume. For every three units sold, one buyer cannot obtain the property. Similarly, in Evergrande's unfinished projects in Changsha, the number reaches a staggering 28,139 units, accounting for 21% of the total transaction volume. This means that for every four units sold, one buyer faces the prospect of not receiving the property. In 2021, 59-year-old Guo Tianran purchased a pre-sold house from Evergrande in Hunan. The house was 126 square meters, costing a total of 820,000 yuan, along with a parking space for 70,000 yuan. Guo spent nearly 900,000 yuan with Evergrande. However, a few months after signing the contract, Evergrande faced a financial crisis. Guo Tianran mentioned that they paid a down payment of 240,000 yuan, and now they have to repay a monthly mortgage of 5,923 yuan. With only 1,000 to 2,000 yuan of disposable income remaining each month, Guo expressed concerns about the future, considering the substantial investment made from their retirement funds and monthly salaries for the next 30 years. In China, purchasing real estate often costs millions. Recently deceased former premier of the Chinese Communist Party, Li Keqiang, once stated that there are 600 million people in China with a monthly income of around 1,000 yuan. Calculating their annual income, it amounts to only 12,000 yuan. For such individuals, even if they abstain from other expenses, buying a property priced around a million yuan would still take decades to a century. For an average Chinese family, a property is a lifetime's worth of income, it encompasses their entire financial resources. Additionally, various major cities in China, including Heilongjiang, Jilin, Liaoning, Anhui, Beijing, and Tianjin, also have varying degrees of Evergrande's unfinished buildings. This once prominent real estate company has filed for bankruptcy protection in the United States, and its founder Su Jiain has been arrested, leaving behind a mess for the distraught Chinese populace. Due to the unique financial operation model in China's real estate, many real estate companies can obtain substantial loans from banks even before the completion of their developments. Although this is not legal in China, due to the immense interests involved in Evergrande's real estate, many banks and officials have expedited the process, benefiting from it. There were previous questions about Evergrande's massive debt, with one individual openly questioning Su Jiain about the origins of the 2 trillion yuan borrowed, how it was borrowed, who permitted it, who approved it, and who personally stamped it. Su Jiain remained silent in response to such queries. The individual then asked about the responsibility for the 720,000 families left homeless due to Evergrande's collapse and suggested that if Su Jiain couldn't bear this responsibility, those who permitted and approved the loan should step forward. Like many other officials, Su Jiain could never answer the questions posed by the people who have been taken advantage of. The collapse of Evergrande signifies the beginning of a real estate collapse in China. Millions of people are facing homelessness, and this is just the beginning. There will likely be more consecutive collapses of Evergrande's real estate developments. This marks what can be called China's modern four great inventions, or rather, four great crises. In contemporary China, filled with absurd fraud, hard-earned money meant to support families is being unscrupulously plundered by some unscrupulous business owners and officials. In conclusion, the contemporary landscape of China reveals a disconcerting reality characterized by the unpredictability of everyday products and the exploitation of hardworking citizens. Whether it's the potential presence of urine in one's beer, the unsettling processing methods in the food industry, the collapse of once prominent electric vehicle companies like Waima, or the widespread housing crises triggered by real estate giants like Evergrande, the challenges facing ordinary people are both numerous and profound. This is History and Culture Channel. 
Your support through likes and subscriptions keeps us going strong. See you in our next update. Stay tuned.